Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alex and today I want to show you how you can lock outgoing HTTP requests and responses using the new REST client. It's gonna be a short one, so let's code. Let's jump directly into the IDE and you can see I start with the dependencies using the latest Spring Boot milestone release because we need the REST client and let's code away. So the idea here is we're gonna configure a REST client that is using an interceptor that gives us access to each request and response. And then we just lock all the things that are in the request. Let's start with some beans. We will need a REST client, of course. Fun, client. That's our REST client. Uh, we start with the builder. Builder uh, is the REST client builder. So we return the REST client, we can just invoke builder build for now because there's nothing else that we could use. And now let's start with the interceptor. So we make this uh, logging interceptor. And this is a client HTTP request. It says client, but we still use it for the response. Uh, we have to implement the intercept function. Uh, let's clean that up a little bit. It's hard to read and close this one. So there we go. Um, so we need a lock, obviously. Uh, let's go with private well lock. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't need the full path here. So let's log uh, factory. Yep, get logger. So we have to log an interceptor here. So in this intercept call, we get access to the current request and the request body. And then we have to return a client HTTP response. So the way we do this is by invoking execution execute request body and that will give us the response but we don't return it because we want to inspect it so we keep track of it here and return it eventually okay so let's have two functions that are actually logging log one is for request logging and we need the body here so we start with the request log so we do log request body and let's also prepare the second function which is for logging the response and we can get the body out of the response itself so there's private fun log response and now let's let's start logging we could log each record independently but i want to have them all together so i'm using um, a string builder here and then let's go builder append line and we add request begin that's funny so we start with request dot method and request uri that's correct so then we go and access all the headers headers for oh come on headers for each header value we log those builder append header well, I should actually name this values because it may be an array. So we might have multiple values. Um, and if body is not empty, we log that as well. So let's append a new line so we can better see the difference between the headers and the body. And then build append line string body. That's correct. And eventually we just say log info uh, request. And then, yeah, I want a line break, it's actually smart. So build it to string. So this way we can lock the request. There's of course more that you could lock if you wanted to, uh, but that's all I'm using here. So let's do the same for the response. String builder, builder append line. So I want to start with the um, status code. So response status code is here and then we do the same with the headers that we did for the request so headers heads <laughs> headers for each beta append line header values that looks correct thanks copilot then we add an empty line and finally we will append the response builder append line um i want no i don't want a buffered reader i want to do something else because that might not work read all bytes um, and then to string. So it's char sets, where is it? UTF, uh, 
I don't see the eight. Is that the eight? Ah, yeah, it is. Oh, that was nice. Um, and finally, we need to log it. So response, same as we did for the request. That's all. So this is how you log requests and response. So the final thing that we need to do now is to configure our builder to have the interceptor. No, it's not this, it's inter request interceptor. So I could now make this a component and inject it here and use it, or I could just create it. Um, let's, let's use the spring way. So I make it a component and then we ask for that interceptor. And then we can edit here. Otherwise I could have equally just created a new instance myself uh, because it doesn't depend on any other dependencies. Interceptor. Okay, now that should be working. And now we need to figure out if it's actually working by executing a request. So we go with a command line runner and we need the client rest client so i go with client get uri i'm using the rick and morty api that i've been using in a previous tutorial so we get the information about rick hopefully so let's retrieve that to body less entity because i don't care about the result we just discard it um, but what we want to see is that this request is locked and the response is locked as well let's run this Coffee time. Well, not so fast. I missed something here. Fixed restart. And we can see a little bit of logging. So here's the request, here's the response. Request says, get HTTPS Rick and Morty API com API character one, content length zero, because we don't send any data, which is correct. And here we can see the response. It gives us a 200, okay. And here we can see all the headers that are set on the response. And here's the body. So we could format this nicely if we wanted to. So we could, uh, for example, we could we could check if the response content type is application JSON. And if that's the case, we could pretty print the JSON here. Otherwise it might be hard to read, but that's personal preference that can easily be extended if you want to. That wraps it up for today. Short tutorial on how to log requests and response. Let me know if that was useful. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.